The introduction of rinderpest into Africa was so devastating that it swept the entire continent within seven years from 1889 to 1897, causing over 90% mortality in cattle population and unquantifiable destruction of wildlife. From then, the disease became endemic in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa except the Southern African region. The transboundary nature of the disease and huge economic losses incurred called for a regional control and eradication strategy. The Africa AU Inter-African Bureau of Animal Resources, AU IBA, and its precursors played a critical role in the coordination and implementation of control and eradication programs in Africa. This is one of the technical offices of African Union Commission based in Nairobi since 1951 and uh, this office physically uh, created to control render best at uh, 1951 and uh, in all the continent 53 uh, member uh, state. AUIBA has since 1962 when the whole of sub-Saharan Africa including Egypt to the north, were infected, technically coordinated four main programs and projects for the control and eradication of rinderpest. In Kenya, the following control and eradication measures programs were implemented under the coordination of AU IBA. These are JP15 in the 1960s to 70s, PAC in the 70s to late 90s, PES late 90s to 2006 and more recently the project I'm responsible for, Sereku from 2006 to date. On the 26th of May 2009, Kenya was presented with a certificate by the World Animal Health Organization, OIE, as proof that our country is free from rinderpest. I literally set the strategies for the eradication of rinderpest from Africa. I got the resources, I got the money, I got the good people, I got the vaccine, and we set off on the vaccination. At that time, rinderpest was all over Africa. It was in West Africa and Central Africa. In Egypt, it was in East Africa. Literally, it was all over Africa. Uh, it's really a long, long uh, journey, uh, almost 60 years now and we achieved this uh, task. Although it may look as a very technical outcome of many years of fight, uh, the eradication of rinderpest, it's also a contribution to eradicate poverty in the continent. This achievement was realized ahead of the planned creation of disease-free zones as one of the Vision 2030 goals. Before the commemoration of eradication of rinderpest achievement held at the Meru National Park on the 26th of November 2010, AU IBA in conjunction with veterinary services on the 24th and 25th of November 2010 conducted animal vaccination and education workshops on the best way of sustaining the achievements and using the lessons learned to control other animal diseases. We had invited uh, scientists from uh, various institutions in the country and even from uh, international institutions. We discussed topics related to the process of rinderpest eradication and uh, also discussed topics on the way forward after the rinderpest eradication. It's taken us 60 years. We don't want to take another 60 years to control other very important diseases which are around us. We would like to take a shorter time and therefore the lessons that we've learned from this process will surely guide us in the way we handle uh, disease control and eradication programs in the future. Also present in Meru were several distinguished personalities who have been involved in the eradication of the disease who gave their experiences. I knew about rinderpest at the very beginning of my working life in 1967 at the then East African Veterinary Research Organization, Muguga, which is now part of CARI. I was a scientist there. So we developed strategies to eradicate the disease from the continent. 
first fire brigade just to vaccinate and control the outbreaks. This is a disease that has had a very considerable impact on livestock and FAO has been working in supporting countries across the globe in the eradication of uh, rinder pest. So this is a very important moment for us, for FAO, and for the partners we have worked with, and namely the OIE, uh, and with support from the, the EU uh, later in the process. The EU has been accompanying Kenya, the Kenyan government, the Kenya Veterinary Services, as well as the veterinary services in many African countries for this fight against rinder pest. We have been one of the major donors, but making available close to 200 million euros to various countries. By 1988, we were confident we had eradicated rinder pest from West and Central Africa because the last outbreak in that region was in July 1988 at the border of Ghana and Burkina Faso. Then we were confident. We were confident we were getting on top of it. So we came to East Africa and we really were working very hard through Sudan, Ethiopia and everywhere. And we also thought we had almost controlled the disease from this region of Africa. We were not able through surveillance to pick any other source of rinder pest until we started losing some buffaloes in Meru National Park around October 2001. That outbreak did not even go to the cattle. The cattle remained uninfected, but uh, it only confined it to a, itself to a, a little uh, buffalo hand. We are at this uh, center. is within the Kenya Wildlife Service game park called Meru National Park, uh, specifically Murera Gate. And uh, this is the climax of that three-day process of the Rita Pest Eradication Commemoration. To crown the commemoration, President Mwai Kibaki joined Kenyans to celebrate the achievement Kenya as a country has made. of Rinderpest from Africa means more secure livelihoods, in particular as over 70% of the poor rely heavily on livestock. Over 212 million cattle in the whole of Africa were under threat. 212 million. This is also a good demonstration how the eradication of an animal disease may contribute to an increase in trade in livestock. And this creates jobs and incomes and affects, of course, in a positive sense, the level of poverty. We now mainstream issues of the livestock sector because even as it was ignored in the 80s, it was contributing 44% of the 25% contributed by the agricultural sector. And it is the least which was getting attention. And now that the government has put in place disease control efforts, the, the recruitment of doctors has now started for the last three years. Every year we are now recruiting 100 veterinary doctors and the, the, the flagship project of disease-free zone, which we are starting in Coast and Isiolo Samburu complex, will be starting soon. Organization of the United Nations, FAO, the European Union, Kenya Agricultural Research Institute.
Dr. Walter Masika don't go far. He just go and also. Dr. Walter Masika is also individuals who have. Dr. Peter Ikondeka. Dr. Ken Wamai. Dr. Dickens Malanga Chibeo. Dr. Pat Egan. Bernard Mugenyo, Dr. Ari Okom Oyas, He applauded the EU and AU IBA efforts with that of the Ministry of Livestock and other stakeholders, which he said will go a long way in improving Kenya's access to export markets for livestock and livestock products. I take this opportunity to commend all our development partners for making it possible for us to celebrate this important in the livestock industry of our country. I also commend our livestock farmers whose cooperation during surveillance and vaccination activities has been crucial in achieving the eradication objective. I am pleased to note that growth in the livestock industry has been impressive. Some of the indicators of this growth include increase in milk production, which reached 4 billion liters last year. 4 billion. The eradication of Rina pest from Kenya will go a long way in improving Kenya's access to export markets for its livestock and livestock products. He praised the European Union for funding AU IBA for the last 40 years in fighting the disease. Kenya will continue to collaborate with our neighbors, international organizations, and other development partners involved in animal disease control in order to achieve this noble goal. I thank you and may God bless you all.